Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. I thought we'd go over a few issues raised by various comments I've received. Today, can our experiences really prove anything? Now, this sounds like a simple question, but really, it's two. Do our experiences prove anything to us, and do they prove anything to others? Firstly, on the subject of using experience as a proof to others, we do this on a constant basis in real life. Every time a scientist finishes an experiment and publishes his findings, those who read his article are trusting that his experience has really happened. In fact, in a sense, experiential proof is required for scientific proof. Whenever a spy brings back intelligence on the enemy, or a boy tells his mother that they have what she wanted at the store, experiential proof is being trusted for information at least until stronger evidence to the contrary turns up. Like other kinds of evidence, personal experience must be weighed against the evidence for the other side. This is why we disbelieve people who claim to have been abducted by aliens and so on. There's simply too much evidence against their claims being true. There's even stronger evidence against reincarnation and Bigfoot and the likes of that sort of thing, but we can take personal experience as a valid proof while still denying some claims that are made based on it. If I see something very uncommon, there are two possibilities. Either what I just saw was a real thing, or it wasn't. Now, we should, ideally, follow where the strongest evidence leads. In this case, there's evidence that what I saw was real. Namely, I saw it. There is no evidence that what I saw was not real. Therefore, the weight of the evidence is on the side of it being real. Simply because it is theoretically possible for my senses to be wrong doesn't cast doubt on the reliability of my senses. You'd need evidence to support a claim like that. Without that evidence, there are a lot of things that were fully rational to believe even though it's possible for them to be false. For example, we believe that the physical world is a real place and not just some figment of our imagination. Yet, there's no way to utterly prove this. So a person who's had experiences and doesn't have a good reason to ignore them is fully justified, even obligated, to believe them. No one can know the truth once they train themselves to ignore their senses. Next, can science uncover the true origins of time and space? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.